fact is I still get to talk to authors like you and <laughs> um, especially after reading your your second book um, but I just want to I want to give you a proper introduction so uh, I am Mary O'Malley and I am the free range bookseller at large for Skylark Bookshop and Samantha Downing is the author of the absolutely huge blockbuster my lovely wife was her first book and um i didn't think she could top the suspense but she did it and then some with her new book he started it which is just an incredible twisty turny thriller samantha thank you so much for joining us um can you tell us a little about your new book and um if you just you know want to read that first paragraph or so that would be awesome sure uh i will first say that it's it's a book about uh three siblings adult siblings who are going on a road trip and two of their spouses are along and they have to go on this road trip in order to get their grandfather's inheritance and the idea is or their mission is to spread his ashes at the end of the trip and this is a trip they were on, the same trip they were on as kids when their grandfather was driving. And now they're adults and they have to do it again. And they have to deal with lots of family secrets and lots of grudges and lots of scores to settle along the way. So the whole book is a two week road trip from that, of the, both the one in the past and the current one. And uh, I was just going to read the first couple paragraphs of the book so you get an idea of how the book goes. Excellent. <laughs> All right, 14 days left. That's how, the day, that's how the book begins. You want a heroine, someone to root for, to identify with. She can't be perfect, though, because that'll just make you feel bad about yourself. A flawed heroine, then. Someone who may break the rules to protect her family, but doesn't kill anyone unless it's self-defense. Not murder, though, at least not the cold-blooded kind. That's the first deal breaker. The second is cheating. Men can get away with it and still be the hero, but a cheating wife is unforgivable, which means I can't be your heroine. I still have a story to tell. And that's how the book begins, and that is Beth, the narrator of the story. And it, it grabs and it just does not let go at all. Uh, from that very first paragraph, I was hooked. Um, let's talk about the title. I mean, the title is so <laughs> perfect. When you were talking about a sibling road trip and, and the cover too is just, man, when I saw this cover, I was so in love. But when I think about siblings on a road trip, he started it. I mean, that's because my brother always did. He would tell you differently, but he started it. So uh, did that title come to you immediately when you had the concept of the book or did it just kind of come as you were going along? Um, this title, it, both this book and My Lovely Wife, I titled after they were written. And with My Lovely Wife, um, the with My Lovely Wife being a common phrase, you know, this is, I'm Joe, and this is my lovely wife, Jane. So I wanted something that was also a common phrase, but that spoke to siblings without saying the word sister or brother, because they were both in the book. So it sort of just came to me, well, what do kids always say to each other? He started it, she started it. And so I, yeah. And so I, I figured that would be uh, good for this one and and sort of imply what it was about. <laughs> That's. That's awesome. I didn't realize how well those two titles uh, do tie in that way. Um, that's very cool. And, you know, we're here to talk about, he started it, but with my lovely wife, um, Christina said it reminds her of one of her favorite TV shows, Dexter, uh, which as soon as she said that, I was like, of course, I didn't think about that during it, but yes. Uh, are there movies, TV shows, uh, books that you draw inspiration for these these thrillers from? Yeah, I think I get inspiration from any any place. It can be TV. My Lovely Wife came from a documentary, actually, that I saw. And uh, the idea of that one 
it, and I, I do love the show Dexter and Dexter was a serial killer. I mean, he was the bad guy, except in his case, he killed people that were worse or that was his, his motto. So yeah. I like the idea of the anti-hero or the anti-hero in our, however it works. Um, I find those more interesting than someone is, who's just good and is just does the right thing. And you know, they're the hero of the story. So I, I do find that more interesting. There was a TV show many years ago called Profit and it was only on, I think it was so ahead of its time. It was only on for four or five episodes and it had the leading character was almost like Dawn Draper in terms of getting ahead in the corporate world and it was called Profit and um, they canceled it after four or five, four or five episodes. I mean, literally like four or five episodes because it was that dark but i bet today it would do fantastically because tv has evolved so much it has you are absolutely right and you know speaking of dark uh did you set out as an author where you just decided i'm going to write endings that mess with people's heads <laughs> or did that come <laughs> organically as you wrote because your your endings are um I I say that they leave the reader gasping and and that's how I felt uh with my lovely wife it was more like a oh wow and <laughs> with he started it and I am not kidding uh <laughs> today uh when I was looking back at the book I wrote a note that this said this is effed up good. I screamed at the end <laughs> and I did. Uh, so is that, is that something you, you, you're like, you know what, I, this is the kind of book I want to write or did it just kind of come out as you were writing? You were like, this is the way it has to, to end. Um, no, I didn't set out to do it. I don't plot my books at all and I don't outline them. So I don't even know how they're going to end. Um, but once I did that in my lovely wife, it, there it certainly was a thought in my mind with he started it that I don't I I I don't I can't imagine ever have an ending that's tied up in a neat little bow because life is not tied up in a neat little bow. Nothing is tied up in a neat little bow. There's always more to this. I'm only telling you a snippet of one story of one family, but it doesn't mean that's all there is to them or that's all there is to the rest of the story. So it has to be open-ended at some level, I think. Um, and if I can shock a thriller reader, that's great. Because thriller readers have read all the twists. So <laughs> you, they are looking for twists, as thriller readers are. And so you have to work extra hard, I think, to reel them in and get them. So I, I see that as part of my job. I don't want to be You are predictable. very successful in that. Um, I found he started it, uh, you know, I, I tell people, pop a Dramamine and order take are so, so fast and furious. Um, and I, I just did not want to put this book down. I, there's no, there's no pausing. Uh, there's no place where you're like, oh, this is a good place. Just set it down. I'll pick it up later. It, it just keeps going. The momentum is so strong. Uh, and Christina said that he started it has been compared to uh, Jillian Flynn in the sibling family secret composite. Um, has her writing influenced hers? Yeah, I would say definitely. I don't think I would be published if not for Billy and Flynn because she really started the whole, what we call the domestic thriller genre. I mean, that's what made it explode, which is when the characters are not police officers or detectives and it's not a traditional like Silence of the Lambs, FBI agent chasing serial killers. These are things that take place in the home and within a family typically and um, she really started with the, the success of Gone Girl is what made the genre explode and people are still reading it. So they clearly want to read it. So I don't know if a book like mine would have even been published if they didn't know people wanted those kind of books. 
Um, I do love her books. My favorite is actually um, Dark Places. I love that book. And uh, that's the one that it, it had a movie, but the movie wasn't very good or didn't do very well. But it uh, it, it doesn't. It's not as famous as the other two because the other two had the movie and the TV show. Dark Places. Excellent. So she's got a twist. She's got a, She has a twisted mind. So I, I love her writing. <laughs> yeah, I you know I didn't realize till I read hers um, that I if you had asked me before that would I be drawn to this kind of writing? I would have said no, but I, I fell in love with it. And yours, um, yours have carried that on. Uh, you know, My Lovely Wife was your first book. And I can only imagine that being published is just <laughs> nerve wracking. What was there a point with My Lovely Wife where you could take a deep breath and be like, whoo, they like it. This is doing well. Uh, no, no, <laughs> because then it's about the next book. So the, you know, in publishing, there's the common phrase is you're only as good as your last book. So what you did two books ago doesn't matter. This is the book that matters. You, you can't, if you want to have a career in it, you, it's always about book that's out now not what you've done before so there's a, there's just a constant pressure on every book I think and I can't imagine that ever going away I mean you'd have to be John Grisham or something to, and that's <laughs> you know that's a whole nother level of writing or Jake, Jake and sure so you're you're taking that uh consistent angst and you're taking it out on your because yeah, totally. People get to rest easy, neither exactly. do they. Uh, has has there been any part of the uh, publishing process that has been a surprise to you um, that you just weren't um, well, expecting? I, think I didn't know anything about it when I got into it. I had no idea how many rounds of revisions I had to go through, or or then copy edits, and then first pass page. I mean, there's all these levels, and I think what is most surprising overall is just how long it takes. And you just, you know, I wrote my my lovely wife was sold more than 18 months before it ever came out. I mean, there's that long of a period of going through revisions and and getting it into publication that people don't realize, especially in today's fast fast world. It's it's like really does it really take this long it really takes that long and, and there's lots of periods where it just feels like nothing's happening and there's stuff going on behind the scenes you're just not there in the publisher's office yeah. you're just doing your writing thing so it, it is a little not, bizarre not even including uh i imagine with the the second book it's not the same way but that first book getting the agent, querying the agents, getting the agent, then having the agent sell the book to the publisher. Uh, there's there's a lot of uh, hurry up and wait times. Uh, mm -hmm. for, for sure. Well, that all got the, most of the time, there's a whole process that goes on before you even get the agent long involved process, which I understand is why a lot of people turn to self-publishing or something because they don't even realize how long the process yeah. is and how drawn out it can be. Absolutely. Natasha wants to know if any of your characters are based loosely or not on uh, people you know. <laughs> <laughs> the brother, the brother, and he started it. Eddie is totally based on my brother. Um, the only my brother's not evil. My brother is Eddie is um, charming and likable, and he makes friends wherever he goes. And that's exactly how my brother is. He's an extrovert. He makes friends everywhere. I mean, it's crazy just even to watch him as an introvert. It's crazy to watch him. But he's that guy that he everybody loves him. In fact, when I had a book signing, I had a book signing out in California for my lovely wife. 
um, in my hometown. And um, these women showed up and came up to me and said, can you tell us secrets about your brother? We <laughs> want to know some secrets. <laughs> Like, give us animal. some dirt. Give us some dirt. And I was like, really? <laughs> Did you put that in? He started it a little dirt for his yeah. female fan club. <laughs> no, no, he did. No, he, he doesn't. Uh, to my knowledge, he doesn't kill people or or <laughs> do anything <laughs> like that. But um, his the personality of Eddie in that book is, um, and that Beth, the middle, the narrator, um, she's not based on anybody. Uh, she's the middle child, and she sort of has that viewpoint of both the oldest and the youngest, um, that sort of middle viewpoint, which is what I wanted. So she's not really based on anybody. But I would say um, the rest of the characters are based, parts of them are people I know. But I would say that's the only one where I could actually name somebody distinct. <laughs> That's nice that you've got a character named after your brother, though. <laughs> now, you've said that you are uh, a, a pantser, not a plotter. That I, I yes. hear those terms a lot. And for those who are watching who maybe don't know what that means, can you describe a plotter versus a pantser? Um, yes, a pantser is someone, it, that's a short for flying by the seat of your pants. And we are writing by the seat of our pants. And versus a plotter who plots out their story, does an outline for it or a synopsis, and knows the story before they start writing. I don't know the story before I start writing. I just start writing. And I discover the story as I go. And that's what makes writing fun for me, is I actually discover the story as a reader would. To me, I, I discover about the characters and about what's going to happen next. And it requires more revision probably than someone who's a plotter. Mm -hmm. um, but I tried plotting and it doesn't work for me. So I've just been writing the other way for too long. I can't force myself to be a plotter. <laughs> I have, and this is my, just a very personal observation, but I have found that writers who describe themselves as pantsers, um, I feel like you're able to throw those twists and turns in because they, they're coming to you and that comes through to us then a little bit too. Yeah. Uh, I, I enjoy that very much. Uh, and can you tell us just a little about your writing routine? You know, yeah. what, when do you write? Um, I write in the morning. Uh, that's usually early in the morning and I do write every day. So it is, uh, it's not always something I keep. I, during this quarantine period, I probably started half a dozen books that I, did never fit that I didn't didn't go anywhere and that's the other thing about being a pantser is not every idea you have turns into a book so I can't tell you how many unfinished books I have there are I, I don't even know too many to count so um, I do write every day and, and even just as a form of practice even if it doesn't uh, turn into a book I do it anyway just for the discipline of it and uh, I may do some editing in the evenings um, or some revisions, but uh, pretty much anything that's creative okay. is in okay. the morning. Do you ever go back to any of those uh, non-starter books and pick them up again and think maybe I could redo this and it would be something? Or when you put it aside, does it kind of stay in a drawer? Um, for the most part, it stays away. There might, there could be a kernel of it I use in something else. But okay. if that if that story didn't grab, my theory is if I'm bored writing it, somebody's going to be bored reading it. So if if I can't get excited about it, I can't expect anybody else to get excited about it. And some just fizzle out. Some some just aren't a big enough story to carry an, a whole book. So at some point, it just is like, I don't have anywhere interesting to go with this. Gotcha. Now, so you've, you've obviously had a lot of extra time to write with quarantine, and you've talked about all these books that you started that got put into a drawer, um, but did I see that you finished your next one? Yes, my third book is done, and it's now I've gone through revisions with my editor and it's often copy edits. So it will be out in 2021. Excellent. Any little hints, anything you can tell us? Christina wants to know as much as I do. It's another thriller <laughs> and um, it involves 
again, something that will be very familiar to everyone. Fantastic. I very much look forward to it. <laughs> I can't wait to get my hands on it. Um, and Jill wants to know, uh, what are you currently reading? I am currently reading, um, I just, I've actually been reading books that are coming out in 2021, I've advanced copies, um, and I just finished one called People Like Her from Ellery Lloyd, and that is a husband and wife team that writes together under the name Ellery, Eller, uh, Ellery Lloyd, and that is, that's a really interesting book about a woman who is an influencer on Instagram, one of those giant influencers with millions of followers, and it's, it's a thriller, and it, it, it is, but it, the sort of peek behind what the influencers really do behind the scenes was fascinating, and then the type of followers and the type of organization that it requires and how planned out it is. Okay. It was really, really interesting. Uh, and right now I'm reading the next book by Christina McDonald, who is also writes uh, more domestic suspense novels. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I've been reading a lot of 2021 books. Yeah. Those yeah. are those are fun when you get the early yeah, copies and it you is, get a good it one. It is. And I see Absolutely. Eliza Jane... Brazier, Brazier. I, I'm a, I, one of these days, Eliza, I'm going to get your name right. And she is on here and she has a book coming out in January 2021 called If I Disappear. And it is fantastic. And Brazier, Brazier, Eliza Jane Brazier. I know that's how you do it, <laughs> right? <laughs> tell, Liza, tell me I'm right. And um, if I disappear, it has this fantastic cover too. You, if you look it up online, it's great. And it's about a woman that had followed a true crime podcast. She'd been following a podcast and the, the woman who was doing the podcast oh, okay. disappears. And she goes in search of finding the host of the, the podcast. I feel like I have seen this talked about somewhere. Um, and I'm going to have to get my hands on a galley. I, I don't think I have one of the, I've got a few 2021 books downstairs too that I'm trying to get my way to. Uh, do you read really just the thrillers then, or do you sometimes take a break and go into some other genre? I do try to take a break. I did a lot during the quarantine. I was reading, um, I read some sci-fi and I read some post-apocalyptic fiction for obvious reasons because the post-apocalypse seemed like the one thing that was worse than what we were in so <laughs> <laughs> once once the world implodes like really really implodes to the point where you don't even have electricity that's yes, even worse than what i we're agree in. so I do try to take a break, um, but I also try to read as much of the thriller genre as out there. I think that, that that's one of the crucial things for a writer. Um, and I know writers, I've met writers who don't want to read their genre because they don't want to be influenced, but it's actually the opposite. You have to know what's out there and you have to know what's done and what's been done and where the genre is going if you expect to succeed. I, I agree with that completely. Uh, as a, a reader and a writer that uh, when I read within the genre that I write, which is nonfiction and memoir and essay type things, it, for me, that gets the creative juices flowing. Uh, it's like, you know, flipping the on switch for me, uh, where I it just, it helps you overtake in a wild cross country road trip. I have driven across the country. I was not with family, though. I drove across the country with my old roommate from college, and we started in New Orleans. I drove to California, and it was great. We didn't have we didn't have problems at all. So it's it's a lot different when you're with friends. So when you're with family, family, there's a lot of like stuff in there, and. Yeah. Um, my brother, if he's listening, he knows we would kill each other in like two days. There, we would never last two weeks. So, but with a friend, is different. You don't have all that childhood, which stuff. is just waiting to come to the surface. Mm -hmm. You know, my brothers live out of state. Uh, 
the minute we're all together, like I can be one-on-one -on -one with any of them, but as, as soon as you get more than two of us together, we immediately revert back to our roles, immediately. And I picked up on that so many times uh, <laughs> reading, he started it. It was just like, this, this is so true to what I know, um, completely. So I, this question, do you read any of your reviews? I'm always curious. Um, <clears throat> I definitely read the industry reviews. The, uh, without, yeah, I mean, those come in, my editor sends them to me. So I, sure. there they are, you know, Publishers Weekly, Kirkus, and the, um, those I definitely read. The first book, My Lovely Wife, I read everything on Goodreads. And I just thought, well, I'm just gonna do it. I just have to take it. And and now I don't read as many. <laughs> so <laughs> I read it like in the beginning when they first start coming in, in the very beginning, and then yeah. I stop. Excellent. I, I can only imagine that as you were talking about reading every one of them, that it must have felt like being the only person left against a whole team of dodgeball players. <laughs> right. I think it can be, it, yeah. It, I learned not to take it personally. I mean, for a lot of people, these books are just too dark for them. They don't want to read about a couple who are serial killers. And that's that's just a, a you know, not every book is for every person. Absolutely. When they start insulting the writing or, or the, 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 they do and then you don't want to read it. And, what I mean, and it doesn't, and you don't want it in your head. You don't want it to affect your writing. So, yes, I would imagine that could be really, really hard uh, to to let it go once it's gotten in there. Um, Tempe wants to know. She says she knows that you love audiobooks, um, and and you know, as we're getting into an audiobook question, I got to put a plug in here for Libro.fm, for anybody on here uh, who listens to audiobooks. I realize a lot of people listen through their library and that's great, wonderful, no problem. But if you purchase audiobooks, Libro.fm, and I've, I've found a lot of people just don't even know it's out there, uh, is the audiobook service that benefits your small, local, independent bookstore. So it's other audio service that we don't name, um, but your credits never expire. You can listen to the book across all your devices, not just on the device you download it on. Um, and a, per, a portion of every purchase goes towards the indie bookstore of your choosing, um, which is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. You also get every audiobook I listen to. I put a personal recommendation on Libro. So you can get recommendations from booksellers. You can listen to clips. Um, I love audiobooks. It's it's upped my uh, my reading tally immensely to have an audiobook going when I'm knitting or when I'm doing housework or mowing the lawn or out for a long walk. Uh, so I think audiobooks are awesome. And have you listened to your audiobooks, Samantha? Um, I've never listened to the whole thing from beginning to end, but I do listen in the beginning. They send me, um, someone from the audio division uh, sends me uh, recommendations for voices that they think are good. So the, um, I, I always know what the voice is going to sound like. And then I do listen to it, but I don't, I don't sit down and read my books either. So <laughs> I wouldn't, I don't think I would listen to it from beginning to end because as a writer, you're just like, oh, that sentence was terrible. Why did I do that? <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I, I, as a writer, I know that the more I look at it, the more I want to change it. And um, early on in my uh, author event career, somebody asked an author, you know, how do you know when you're done with your book? And they said, when my editor drags it out of my hands and says, you're done. Is that how you feel too? Yeah, I, yeah, I did. In fact, when I, um, turn in my last draft for the third book. 
I was expecting to get it back. And she was like, yay, it's done. And I was like, wait. <laughs> I didn't know it was done yet. I thought that I was the final. Done. That was the final. Are you sure that was the final? So, yeah, they, yeah it's, it's good to be prepared for that at any time, apparently. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, I think we are through with questions, unless somebody has a, a last one they'd like to throw up. Um, but I do want to say to everybody here that. Uh, if you are looking to buy a copy of He Started It, I hope you will do so through Skylark Bookshop. Um, yes, oh, look at that. See, I, I have the early copy and look at how beautiful that final copy is. Yeah, when you buy your copy from Skylark, you are going to get not only a signed book plate to put in it uh, that Samantha has already signed and sent, But uh, only available here, a uh, collectible series of bookmarks with sky coups. And a sky coup is a haiku written for Skylark. And our authors, um, so this is our, our must read TV series of Thursday night author events. And so we've asked our authors if they would write a little haiku. And then we print them. Um, on these homemade, charming, <laughs> artisan, collectible bookmarks, which Samantha will then sign a number. And she's already written her Sky Coup. Uh, these, you know, you can't get this can't. anywhere else. Yeah, it anywhere is else. The, Not only it's the only getting... haiku I've ever written. The only, in my, I had to look it up to even write it. <laughs> completely unique. You will never find this anywhere else. Uh, it's absolutely um, a, a must-have, a must-have with Samantha's book. So it's a limited number of Sky Coups. Uh, there are only 25 available. So if you want to make sure you get one of those, then send an email because they're going to track the emails. And uh, whatever number email yours is, is where you are in the lineup for the Sky Coup. And that email should go to mail at skylarkbookshop.com. Um, and just let them know that you're interested in buying the book from tonight's event. They will contact you tomorrow to arrange for payment and get the shipping uh, information. And yes, so buy the book, support your indie bookstores. I, I realize the pandemic has been. Uh, terribly difficult for people across all lines of business. Um, bookstores, which already are, you know, they, they, we have to hustle. Um, nobody gets rich. Uh, very few people get rich writing books or selling books. Um, we do it because we love it. And uh, authors, uh, they write because they're, they're just pushed to write and, we sell books because that's just our calling. We want to connect you with the books that you love and the authors that write them. So Samantha, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I hope all of you <clears throat> will order a copy of this book. Um, I literally, when I finished this book, I screened and threw it. And my husband came into the room and he said, What's, what happened, what's wrong? And I said, the book and he said what what what's wrong and i said just this book i can't believe the ending um i want you all to experience that for yourselves and let samantha know when you get the book and you uh let let us know and let samantha know how charming you find this sky coup because it's amazing and then let her know what you thought of the ending um and hopefully uh her next one will be just as gripping i can't wait but we'll, uh, we'll keep pushing this one in the meantime. It is a twisty, turny, page turning, cannot put it down, it, throw on your yoga pants, order takeout, because nothing else is getting done <laughs> once you open this book. And thank you again, Samantha, and we hope to see you for the next one as well, maybe even in person. Hopefully, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This is Absolutely. Been fun. Thanks, guys.
Alex, do you have anything you want to add? He doesn't want to come back on. <laughs> <laughs> da -da. Just have a lot of thank you, thank you, thank you. Can't wait to read it. Um, all right. I think we're, uh, people are sending in their book orders now. Alex is good. Leanne says thank you. Temp says thank you. Janine, everybody was thrilled. So thank, thank you all you. for joining us, guys. And thanks for all the thank yous. I always feel like these are, uh ending a zoom is a reverse waltons <laughs> where uh it, it's like good night goodbye bye hi thank you <laughs> see you guys thank you <laughs>